Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Tyler Edlin. Now, disclaimer, I'm not any kind of engineer or architect, but I do draw a lot of buildings, mostly for games, sometimes for animation, and of course I teach that at CGMA. Today I want to give you five tips for just drawing structures and buildings in general. So let's begin. Architecture, like many facets of design, is about visual communication, right? It's, it's utilizing the additive and subtractive method of primitive shapes. In my opinion, all great architectural designs start with a core clarifying concept. Is it organic or is it geometric? Where is it located? What's its purpose or function? Is it a residential home? Is it a makeuplex corporation? Architecture, in a sense, is about creating a space and giving it a purpose. With buildings, though, buildings interpret you know, their surroundings and they can basically can reformulate them into an experience. For what I often like to do is balance between three primary features. Is it functional? Uh, how does its visual aesthetics ad artfully address its needs? And narrative. The, what is the lifestyle of the characters or the people that inhabit you know this building and what are their interests I do feel it's best to balance your designs carefully addressing these core pillars are you gonna be drawing a tower if so what kind is this a tower for defense perhaps it's to store materials or water maybe it's to act as a beacon or signal station is that tower for commercial use or perhaps an alien military Will the form follow the function, like this fire watch tower? Or will it be more artistic where the function follows the form, like with the Seattle Space Needle? How can you bring a fresh perspective to these types of creative problems when drawing a building? So tip number one, understand the language you need to use. Spend time in the world observing and experiencing everything. Everything designed has a set of pieces or components. These at surface level, they may just seem like roofs, walls, doors, but really they are just shapes and forms. They typically aren't some random combination of shapes. There is a hierarchy and sometimes there's patterns, but it's always a planned arrangement. So learning to see these basic shapes is an art itself known as simplifying. I recommend for beginners to either practice doing deconstruction sketches of existing buildings or try to create buildings using one shape. Often as you can see here, what I simply do is if I'm not out observing, I'll just grab a photo of an existing structure and I'll trace the shapes and forms. I'll break it down, eventually removing that photo, and then over time the idea is that you can just redraw those shapes and those forms and this is how you practice it again and again. But you know, from different angles to, to really show your comprehension of that arrangement of pieces, thus learning and being able to reproduce that design language. So tip number two, have a plan. As I said, you don't need an architectural degree or to be an engineer to draw these buildings. However, some sort of plan, of course, does help. Consider the plan a set of restrictions or perhaps a target to hit. Sometimes I just come up with a simple shape or theme. Others it's a more extensive design brief outlining many aspects and components like its functionality, its history, perhaps it's just an interesting geographical location. It is about asking the right questions and these questions will ultimately guide your own design process. This process is not absolute or even linear. And so guys, I'd like to show you one of my best students work in some of her environment designs. Uh, Angelina's here. So she, you see a bunch of images up on screen, you see a few plans. And I just, she just recently wrapped up this prison fortress mining town facility. And you know, this is great, I love it, turned out well. But all these start, she, she kind of builds these briefs, you know, when we're starting a project. We kind of work on them, come up them together, and they guide the entire process. So she'll know, okay, I need to look up color palettes like this, architecture like this, and it, it just kind of sets the tone and the pacing for a lot uh, of what's to come. She, of course, has ad additional 
reference sheets for each of these, but it really helps guide her throughout the process of creating these complex ideas. She did the same thing a little while ago before this, when kind of coming up with this feudal Japanese castle. Even though this is very historically kind of intact, she's still picking and pulling from various aspects as she pieces it together. She started this one from the inside out, coming up with this grand idea for this awesome epic throne room with these nice cinematic qualities, and then eventually we panned out, figuring out what the exterior of this structure could really entail. So guys, before you just jumping into any kind of shape, or any kind of just drawing, free sketching, there's of course time and place for that, but figure out what you want to say and then figure out what are the components and pieces you're working with. Have and start to formulate that plan. Tip number three, start simple. Now building worlds, designing cities, to simply drafting a singular structure can be a demanding and intimidating task. Start simple. As mentioned previously, First come up with a plan, then do as much reference gathering as necessary. If you're only spending 10 minutes doing your research, that's simply not enough. Now before jumping head on into coming up with these gorgeous compositions, figure out that design language, right? Referencing from tip number one. Keep it fast, keep it simple. Draw in a design view so that there's no need for perspective. Design sets of buildings using primitive shapes like squares and triangles like in these viking buildings that you're seeing now until you can visibly start to see the relationships and traits of them think first in regards to these shapes and forms then move into the deeper understanding of that space you can establish then any themes build rhythms of detail and then save the last of the embellishments and materials for last can come up with the specific elements and aspects of doors, of the framing, of window alignment. That should all come after those basic primitive shapes. And then, of course, you can figure out, is it wood? Is it metal? Is it stone? Don't try to figure out all these things at once. Tip number four, familiarity. Design is about solving problems. If you are a beginner or at student level, it's important to remember there is no technical right or wrong when it comes to designing these high-end fantasy and sci-fi worlds. Leave the mentality that you have to design something that's never seen before at the door, because otherwise it's gonna really hinder your growth. Instead, aim to have enough familiar elements to stay firmly grounded. This will foster your problem solving and analytical skills. Like in these example where I'm developing these ruins here, I'm borrowing heavily from Aztec, from Egyptian, a little bit of Mayan, to even hints of Egypt. I'm referencing all of them while at the same time I'm not making it overly obvious that it's any one culture that I'm borrowing from, essentially inventing a new one. Without a recognizable human element of design, we are just left with things that are far too unrelatable. In a few instances, that's actually the goal, but for 95% of the design work out there, that's probably not the case. I recommend finding your first 70%. Base your idea from there, and then feel free to try to get creative. Tip number five, visual storytelling. Of course you've been watching up to this point and maybe even taking some notes. And I have mentioned, stay grounded, gather references. But with that said, reality is sometimes too real and can even be boring. Often in entertainment design, we like to combine the best set pieces from culture and history to conjure up something new, something a little more original. Think of these at new sets with all the key selling points. Excellent lighting, dynamic shapes and forms, and rich narratives. Think of it as designing what you would perceive the world to be instead of the actual reality. This skill can separate a mediocre designer from a highly valued one. Just remember to consider what is the essence of what you're trying to capture versus the direct literalness of it all the time. Even if it comes to a task like designing a door or a gate, I'll ask myself what the core idea is at play and find a way to bring out the most interesting aspects of it. The storytelling itself can be narrative based like implementing certain lighting choices, materials used, to aging things to a certain level. I like to think of it as putting part of myself right into it. 
For me, it's the years I've worked in the steel industry. I spend a lot of time around warehouses and manufacturing plants. I'm just tying my experience there into this gate idea. Hey guys, thank you for watching. If you made it to this point, let me know below if you have any questions about any of the content or what I showed. I'd be happy to get back to you. And until then, I'd like to give a shout out to my patron, Tuao De Brito. He's got some great stuff, some awesome attention to detail here, a lot of hard surface sort of prop design, all around really solid material. Go check him out on ArtStation. He has some really unique and creative designs. And for those interested, I of course have loads more content available on Patreon. Later this week, I am going to be releasing part three of my How to Design a Picture series. Part three covers visual hierarchy in its entirety, from focal points to the division of space, how you can achieve different types of visual depth, to the core designing principles behind almost any picture. There's exercises you can practice, there's demonstrations to follow, there's student paint overs involved. There's a lot of lecture there. So check it out this week if you at all struggle with compositional design. Thanks for watching and take care.